Those of you that have been watching some of my recent videos and hanging out in the premieres, you might have noticed me mention Pwncat, and it's kind of going through a little bit of revision, a little bit of upgrade. We're kind of wanting to switch it to more of like a Metasploit-like module syntax and, and use for running certain things. Um, I don't take any credit for that. That is all towards Caleb, the incredible genius and mastermind that Pwncat really, really belongs to. I don't, it's it's his baby. Um, and this is a conversation between me and him. I thought I'd just call him up on Discord and kind of see what he's been up to and uh, really the new changes and things that are happening in Pwncat. And we can deep dive into the code and showcase some of the use cases and really what's been going on and hopefully some of the really cool stuff. So without further ado, let's Roll the clip. <laughs> What's up? Does it look okay? Yeah. I, you... <laughs> I literally went uh, to the store and I was like looking for just like a common webcam. Like I expected to go there and find like a bunch of like random Logitech ones that I knew would be like fine. They had one kind. Was, <laughs> what is this brand even? I don't even know. The box is on the floor. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck is. I don't even, I'm looking at the box. I don't even know where the brand name is. But if it works, then it works. It works. So is my audio fine? Because the audio is going through that as well. Yeah, you're a little echoey, but you know what? The internet doesn't care. It's probably because I'm in a really, really big open space. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But, uh, so what did you want to actually do? I don't know. I mean, this isn't all like ready, but I'm fine talking to you about yeah, no, the whole point was so like if you're cool with like either showcasing what you've been up to or like what you've been making or what changes are in there. Yeah, let me make sure this actually like runs because I had an error a second ago. <laughs> so I make sure I can actually run it. Classic. Uh, I was changing a lot of things and I just want to make like the stuff that I'm changing doesn't affect the other stuff I made before, but at the moment it's causing some. Cool. Have you been pushing into the uh, modules branch over on GitHub? Yeah, so that's what I push. The enumeration stuff is there. Uh, the persistent stuff, I don't think I pushed yet, and I'm working on um, the escalate stuff, which the I just finished writing like the basic structure of it, but I haven't converted any modules yet, so I don't know if it's all actually working yet. Um, but I mean, I can push what I have now. I mean, that's not a deal if you want before we actually do this. Sure. Pushed. Get finished. Uh, I guess I can make sure that this actually share this entire screen. Sound may not be available when sharing a screen on your device. Uh, that's fine. Does that work? Can you see me? Yes, I can see your screen. <laughs> What am I doing? I don't know. What is like an optimal size? What's going on? Uh, what you had just there was pretty perfect, I think. Perfect yeah, like that's that's okay. That's good. Cool. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. That's roughly the same. -ish. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um... Bump that guy up a little bit. Bump that guy up a little bit. I'm, really to see. I'm only opening one of these. Uh, okay. I don't know if you're opening you're only doing. one of those, can you bump that up at all? Or I can bump it up a little more. Yeah. Cool. I can I can change the sizes. I just stopped because when there was only when there was two of them, it was like disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's got the gross Discord compression, but whatever. Uh, is it like funky? A little bit. If you can do a smidge bigger, but that. Is that yeah. yeah, 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 that's good. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't really need the fucking file browser thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, we can talk about shit if you want. Um, <laughs> close all of this so that I don't want to be a fucking madman. It's too late. You already look yeah. like a fucking madman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I don't like switch to a random desktop and there's like weird shit open. <laughs> <laughs> I know it too well. <laughs> uh, okay, all that's left is Emacs shell and an empty Firefox. Incredible. Let's just go to Google. <laughs> <laughs> now we're clean. 
Move that guy to two and that guy to three. I'm already recording, so I'm going to have all this good. Oh, really? I'm already going to have like the good filler <laughs> and set up for. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I didn't know you were already recording. Uh, I don't know how you want to like start this or whatever. Uh, absolutely casual and chill. And, uh, what have you been working on? What, what would someone, uh, who had used PwnCat before and now has suddenly been told, well, shit, all the source code and everything is completely changed for how it runs things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess, uh, to start off with, um, I am in the process of breaking everything. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not breaking everything, uh, but I am changing the way everything works. Um, so in the past, uh, there were three different um, main types of modules, or I called a lot of them were called methods before, um, that you could implement. There was uh, privilege escalation uh, methods, there was persistence methods, and there was enumeration methods. Um, each of those was handled by its own uh, for lack of a better term, handler um, in Python, um, that that would actually dynamically load the modules out of a certain directory um, and then look for things implementing a specific class uh, and then use those modules so you could actually access them through Pwncat. All of that exists still. I haven't removed any of it. I'm working on a branch, but I still haven't removed any of those other things. So all the things like privesk and all that kind of stuff still exist, um, just like before. Uh, however, uh, I'm moving to something different um, I would like to kind of consolidate things. Oh yeah, I'm running as root, so that got a little crazy. <laughs> uh, I'd like to kind of consolidate things in one coherent interface that is consistent. Um, so as opposed to uh, running or creating a module and having to worry about which directory it goes in and how you access it and how you interface with it, or maybe you implement a uh, privilege escalation module that is more complicated and these other options that's hard to do if not impossible to do with the way that Pwncat used to be structured um, there's not really a way to pass arguments like arbitrary arguments to the specific uh, modules um, if they needed specific configuration values they had to be set in the global configuration object um, and then that might mess up a different one they, it was all shared so it was kind of it worked if you were assuming that everything could be completely automated with no user intervention um, but the minute things got more complicated it, it didn't completely work right, I don't think, or it doesn't, I guess, is a better way to put it. It hasn't been merged yet. Yeah, because, um, I mean, you you had commands like privesk and enum, and those would have, like, a, a hyphen option or whatever parameter and argument you could pass through, but it, that was it, and that wouldn't trickle down to the sub-modules that it was actually using to do those things, right? So there was no way yeah. to give it any um, other... I don't know. Let me see if I can, like, as an example, I guess... Uh, let's see, I guess the old privilege escalation, if we look at set UID, um, blow that up a little bit. Uh, so if we look at set UID, the only things that you receive, for example, the biggest part is the enumerate. So enumerate is what would actually go through and say, hey, what options do I have for this privilege escalation method? Um, and the only parameters you really got were what capabilities for, and those are things like read or write or a shell. Um, so reading, writing, reading, or writing files as a different user, or getting a shell as a different user. Those are the only options that you really got. And you weren't able to get any other information. The only other way that you could actually get configuration for for a module was through the config object, which was available to everything, but it was a global object. So if you set a configuration value, whether that be in the configuration file or at the prompt in Pwncat, that would apply to all modules, um, which can be bad depending on what you're doing. You, you might want one specific option with the same name set for differently for two different modules. Um, and there wasn't really a way to do that. You couldn't run an individual module by itself because the actual privesk command um, that you were talking about a minute ago um, doesn't have an option to do. You could exclude modules by name, but you couldn't actually run an individual one by itself. Um, and the same kind of went for enumeration and things like that. You couldn't run one enumeration module very easily by itself, or maybe I added an option, I forget exactly, but it wasn't easy and it wasn't straightforward. Hmm. Um, so I kind of went down a path, um, something I didn't want to do at the very beginning, which kind of my, my apprehension with it shaped the way Pwncat is now, um, is that I didn't really want to copy what Metasploit did um, with the whole use and run and then modules like that. Um, 
that being said, um, I kind of sucked it up and I did that. Um, so that's where I'm heading now um, is defining modules instead of uh, all in these separate directories. I don't know if that's easy or not, yep. um, but in these separate directories of whether that be uh, Privesk or Persist or Enumerate, they all have their own directory structure, consolidating that all into one module structure where running them as a uniform interface, whether it's privest or persistence or escalation or, or sorry, escalation or persistence or uh, enumeration, it's all consistent and it makes for an easier interface. Um, so that's what I'm working on right now. It kind of works, but I'll have, well, I shouldn't say kind of, it does work, um, but I have to finish out the escalation part of it because while they all are, are all um, inheriting from the same basic module structure, they do have different requirements. Like a escalate module is going to look different than an enumeration module. And the way you create them is going to be different, but at their core, you run them the same. So that's the big part of it. Um, it does work right now for enumeration. So, I mean, you can search for modules. If you search, you can see there's a few of them uh, implemented here. My terminal is really small, so it's politicizing some of them. Um, but you can search for modules and we'll give you kind of a quick description of them. Um, you can actually run info and say we want to know about info.enumerate.cats. So if we do that, we'll get kind of a little help documentation of that specific module. Um, now, normally when you do enumeration, we initially get out of the box, you're going to that you don't want to just enumerate capabilities of files. Or maybe you do want to run that one. So that is possible now. You can run an individual module easier. Um, and so you can do things like run, enumerate, caps and it will run that and it will return the facts. Say, hey, I found these facts. Here's the capabilities of different files in the system. Um, but then on top of that, there is still a uh, clean Python interface. So you can, imp so there are modules implemented to group those together. So maybe you want to gather facts from multiple different uh, modules and you say, hey, I want um, the types I want are going to be file.caps. That's going to do basically the exact same thing. You're going to gather file capability facts from all modules. Um, now, the caveat there is that that's not specifically referencing the enumerate.caps module. That's referencing any module that can give you uh, enumeration data of that type. So if there are multiple modules that might be able to find different things like that, which happens sometimes, or maybe one mod module might um, inadvertently come across some data, which sounds weird, but it can happen. Um, and it just says, hey, I found this type as well. Um, then it can find it throughout all of the modules. Um, you can also specify one specific module here. Um, I think it's modules. Uh, uh, yeah. So we can check that, which is going to hang. Don't know why that happened. Like I said, I am still working on this. Uh, in any case, you can also specify individual modules to run, but that kind of defeats, like, isn't really necessarily super useful because you can also just run it directly. Right now, all I have is set UID and uh, capabilities. So both of those work. Um, you can also clear enumeration, so you can uh, do it on an individual one. If you just specify clear, um, then that will clear the enumeration data, and when you run it again, it will have to actually go through and find it all again. Um, but you can do that also with the gather. So you gather and you filter, and you say, I want to clear out all types file.caps, and that's going to clear all of those. That way, that, those will have to run again. Um, so that's, that is all working. Enumerate actually works pretty well at this point, um, with the exception of the exception, the exception of the exception, I got a second ago, um, that I'll look into once this video is over. Um, but it, it is functioning pretty well. Uh, you saw the actual individual, um, help documentation, which I think is super useful and super cool. You can see exactly what arguments that each one takes. You can see exactly, um, how it works. Um, the and the things I've been working on today slash last night uh, have been some uh, persistence structure and escalate structure. Um, escalate is more complicated just because there's more moving pieces and more things that have to happen and it uses enumerate and things like that. So that's not quite ready. Um, persistence uh, seems to be working so far. Um, so if I search for persist and I can see there's two different persistence modules or two, two different modules underneath persistence. One is gather, which is similar to the enumerate gathers, so you're going to look up things. In this case, uh, gather is going to grab persistence modules that are installed. So if I run uh, persist.gather, 
Right now, it'll show me, hey, I have uh, persist.password installed with these arguments. Um, so with that, something that we kind of talked about before was that persistence modules or modules in general in the past couldn't uh, take in arbitrary arguments. Um, with the new structure, you can do that now. Um, so a persistence module is the most common one that I can think of that need those arbitrary random unknown arguments that might need to be passed to it. Um, this whole thing kind of came up because someone put a pull request in for a, on GitHub for a, uh, a cron tab persistent module, which is yeah. great. It's a fantastic thing that, um, we had talked about implementing and I was working on other features and things like that. And it's not something that's incredibly complicated. We just hadn't done. It. Um, and so somebody did that. I was like, oh, that's fantastic. And I, and I went through and looked at it and, and shout out to him. I, I forget his username to be honest with you. I probably should look it up. I, I'll, I'll pull it up. Good. It's on GitHub, um, yeah. and and he he implemented that, and I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Caveat though, your he prompted for uh, user input with input in Python. Um, that's not the end of the world, but the problem being that sometimes in certain situations, Pwncat tries to automatically run these persistence modules. One of those situations is if you don't have a GCC or Python, and you get a effective UID versus UID mismatch, is what it calls it. Um, it tries to use a persistence module, install that, and then use that to escalate to get full um, UI, UID and EUID uh, matching. Um, but that would break because it would call input, and then the user would have to type something in, and that would break kind of the, the use case, or not the use case, but the, the flow of execution in, in Pwncat. It, would, it wouldn't be right. So I looked at it, I was like, okay, well, now I, I really should implement some way to pass arguments, and I realized that the architecture I had built didn't really support that. So that's how this all kind of started. Um, so this is a basic one that just adds a new user to add the password. Um, but you can see that you can specify specific arguments. Um, those arguments come from can come from a few different places. Um, the first place, so we can run persist uh, gather remove, and that should remove it. So now if we run gather again, it's gone. Um, the actual arguments can be specified in a few different ways. So if I go persist.password, I can just specify them here. Um, I can actually say like backdoor user equals, um, I don't know, John. I think John actually already exists on the yeah. screen. Uh, Caleb, we'll just use my name. Uh, if I just say backdoor user equals Caleb, that will actually work. And I guess I can show, if I go info persist.password, uh, um, you can see all the different arguments that it's expecting and the description of what it's going to do. It's going to install it back to our user uh, with a UID of zero and empty password and use our password. Uh, you can set all these different things and most of them have defaults. You need to specify um, the uh, user um, and then the uh, other options have some defaults. Um, so what I was doing a second ago is I can actually run persist the password, I can say that I want to install with group persistence um, and I want to use a backdoor user of Caleb. Um, it should do that, theoretically. It says it's completed. If I run gather again, um, I see that the backdoor user is Caleb. And if I actually went and I said SD password, um, I can see that, hey, I have a user named Caleb with UID zero. So nice. that works. Um, something else. Uh, the actual escalation works as well. I just did, uh, Bob and did that. So now I run Pwncat again, and I'm going to get a shell at Bob instead of root this time. So now I'm Bob. Um, if I do, uh, because the password is there, I can run persistent gather, and it already has a module installed. So if I run uh, persist.gather, uh, is that what it is? I just made all this in the last two days, so <laughs> forgive me for forgetting. Um, so if I run persist.gather and then I tell it, hey, of all the persistence methods that you enumerated that are installed, and so of those, try and escalate with them. Um, so if I just do this, basically what's going to happen is that uh, I am saying I want to find uh, all persistence mo installed persistence modules uh, that give me access as the user root, and I want to use whichever one works and give me root. Um, is basically what that's saying. Um, in this case, there's only one of them, so it's just going to do that one, and it worked, and now I'm root. Um, awesome. So that that works. That piece works. Um, one of the things moving forward uh, that I would that I'm working on actually it was actively working on a little bit ago uh, was the actual escalation structure, which is going to look a little different. It's going to look in like this basically in the end. 
um, from a prompt side. And it's also going to look a little different from a Python side. Uh, I don't remember what else was in our chat. I won't open that for now. I'll just kind of go through the code. Um, but basically what I'm envisioning it to look like is that you'll be able to run something like run escalate uh, and running escalate by itself will just attempt to list all of the privilege escalation uh, methods that we know or techniques that we know about. Um, that's what that would do. Um, if you ran escalate, um, you could also run escalate dot, I don't know, pseudo, and you would run that specific module and try and escalate to, and to list out the techniques that it found. Nice. So you'd be able to run each individual one by itself, but there would also be still that auto function where it will try and recursively find a way to the user you're looking for. Um, what's kind of interesting, so that, that's, that's the majority of, of what that would look like there. Um, you, again, you would still be able to pass like the parameters, like user and things like that. Um, you would end up, if you ran it by itself, you would get a list of the techniques that it was able to find. Um, and if you ran it, you could run it as exec and shell equals bin bash or something like that. It would run. There would obviously be a default for shell or whatever. Use the shell that you're currently using. Um, but this is what I'm envisioning the syntax to look like on the terminal. And obviously you can run, like I said, you can run escalate by itself. And that would do the auto escalate, kind of like we had before. And you could do the same type of thing by itself. It would just list out the techniques that it found. And if you ran it with exec, it would run the shell that you found, or you could um, read and say that the path is as the shadow. Um, that means I want to read a file at this path as a different user, and we'll try and do that. Um, so similar things that existed before, but with a little bit more of a consistent interface, um, and hopefully a more uh, an easier to follow uh, on the code side as well. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I can show. I mean, uh, you, I you said you had made it kind of like Metasploit like, so I saw you using that run kind of prefix all the time. Can you like oh. use a module or? Yeah, I forgot about that. Actually. Thank <laughs> you. So if I, so like I said before, we can run that. We can, uh, if we, we can also do use persist.gather. I guess I kind of got on a, on a sidetrack there. Um, originally, a long time ago on this video, I was talking about where parameters come from. You can do them as at the end of a run command. You can set variable equals value at the end of a run command. Um, they also come from two other places, one being the global configuration um, that we've always had, uh, and the other being if you actually use a module. So say, uh, did we, do we still have one of them installed? I don't remember. Uh, yeah. So remove that. Um, so then if we go and we say use persist.password, um, now that changes our context. We're now nice. in the context of that module. Um, I forget if I did this. It should work. Yeah. OK. So <laughs> <laughs> if you type info uh, while you're in that context, you'll get the information about the current module, similar to how, again, how Metasploit can do that. You'll get information about the arguments and things that you need to specify. Um, in this context, if you run like user set user root, now uh, that has set the current user or the current value of that variable to root. You can see it was set. Um, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing I should probably add a column in that info output to show the current value that you set. In any case, hmm. may or may not be there in the future, but if you type set by itself, you'll see all the current values, including global values. Um, if it's not set, in your uh, module specific setting, like we were just setting where we set user equal to root, um, it will look at the global. And so again, similar to uh, Metasploit, if you set tag G uh, and then where tag tag global should be something like that, so yeah, uh, then you can set a global value that will persist across all of them, all the modules that you run. Um, that's the last resort place that it'll try and pull a value from. Uh, but ideally, either at the end of the run command or um, or in like your local settings. Um, once you have set all your options, you can just type run because of that without any other parameters and run that and install it. Now we run persist.gather without remove. Um, we'll see it installed with the default options uh, that you saw with those global options um, of backdoor user, phone cat, backdoor password. Um, and shell equals current basically means whatever shell Pwncat is running in, that's the shell it's for that user in SD password. 
Um, you can also set it to a file path of whatever you want. Um, that's how it works. Uh, like I said, persistence uh, and enumeration, I think, are in a pretty good and solid spot. Um, from a code side, I'm trying to think of what I could open that would actually be interesting and make any sense whatsoever. Uh, if I actually open, look at, I don't know, an enumerate module. If I open this, is this going to make any sense? It looks all similar to what it used to. Um, a little simpler, I think, though. Um, so all the enumerate modules are going to inherit from uh, this enumerate module base class. Um, all they have to define is an enumerate method um, that is going to be a generator that yields a tuple of a type of fact that you're yielding and then the actual fact data. Um, facts can be basically anything, but they should have a string um, method so that you can actually display them so that whenever you, for example, just run it in the terminal and you get that output, it knows how to actually build that output properly. So they just have a string, but they can be anything. Um, and what is some other interesting, I guess, from a usage point of view, how you actually use this code, because that was another goal of mine is that, Hey, even if I move to this, I still need it all to be easily accessible from Python. I need to be able to, from Python, run these modules and get the raw facts out without it trying to like clobber the terminal and do weird things. Um, like these individual modules shouldn't be dependent on display and interface they should just return results and however you run them is, is what dictates how it gets how it gets displayed so as an example the gather module for enumerate um, can actually run through and say hey phone cat modules match i'm going to look for any enumerate module that is of a base class of enumerate module so that actually gets back a list or in this case a set because we're trying to dedupe them um, gets back a list of modules themselves the actual module object itself. The module object has a method run, and so that's generally how you run any module. You can literally just call met module run with whatever keyword arguments that it requires. Oh, nice. Um, so in the case of the the um, enumerate modules, uh, there's different what, whatever I forget all the options that all these things have. To be honest with you, um, but. So like in, in the case of this, if you ran, uh, for example, pwncat.modules.run is a method or a function, um, and then you gave it the module you wanted to run as a string, persist.gather, you could then put comma and give it keyword arguments of like module equals or escalate equals or remove equals. Um, and it would actually take those in and pass them on to the module properly. Um, so when you actually receive them, you can see in this example here, um, you define this arguments dictionary that is basically mapping the name of the argument to an argument type that has uh, a function or callable that will convert a string into the type you want. Um, and then it also has a default value and a help string. Um, and then how you actually process that, PwnCat will automatically interpret those values, convert them to the correct types, make sure that they actually convert to the correct types properly. Um, give you the defaults if need be, um, and that kind of thing. And then you just take them in as normal parameters to your runtime. So in this case, we have output modules types and clear, which are come from directly right here. And we know that output will be this file type that I created that is uh, it's similar to the R parse file type thing where it returns an open file. Um, uh, or modules, we know that's going to be a list of strings. Uh, or types is also going to be a list of strings clear is going to be a Boolean value. We know that those types are already checked and that's already correct in here. We don't have to do that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, what else did you want me to get into? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this is super duper cool. It looks super clean. Uh, I, it, it's funny because I'm noticing like the Emacs things that you have in there. Like, I don't know how it shortened that function to an F and the for each. Those are like little oh, code yeah. symbols. Yeah. Yeah, nice. it, uh, it shrinks stuff. I, I turned it on a long time ago, and I'm still, I'm still unsure whether I hate it or I like it, <laughs> but I haven't turned it off, so I mean, whatever. Cool. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so that was kind of my, my, my biggest goal was to straddle the line between provide, uh, I guess, advanced maybe is the right word, I don't know, uh, more complicated features to these modules so that they could accept, uh, have more complicated situations as they work in, for example, accepting more arguments or other things like that. 
but not take away from the automation that Pocket had before. So I didn't want to um, make accessing this information any worse from Python. I wanted it to still work nicely, um, but I also wanted to make it more broad and more more applicable to more situations. Um, what I think is kind of cool is that another thing I guess that I had talked about with John before is that this run method, what actually happens is this run method in the actual modules themselves uh, gets decorated automatically. There's a, there's a meta class and it gets automatically decorated in Python um, so that when you actually run that, there's a decorator that runs first and it will do all of the argument processing for you. But it also, if this run method is a generator, so if it uses yield and generates values, um, this actual decorator, which I guess I could open it real quick. Um, yeah, is that one? Yeah, there's that one. Uh, so this actual decorator is up here and it might be kind of gross. Yeah. Uh, but this is the decorator for every single run function, run method for every single module is decorated with this function. Um, this whole block of grossness, admittedly, <laughs> uh, is just processing the arguments. Um, so the argument type, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna pass the um, value you send in to the argument type constructor to make sure that all the arguments are the correct type. It's gonna raise exceptions if there's missing arguments and that kind of thing. Um, but one of the really cool parts is it's going to run the actual real run, as we call it here, the real run method, um, passing in obviously the self and all the arguments that we just processed. Um, the return value of that is going to be one of two things, right? In Python, if you have a generator, the return value when you actually run that function um, is a generator object. Um, now, that's not, that means if you receive, if you get a return, a generator back, that means the function has completed running. Um, it might be stuck in the middle of it because you haven't iterated through the generator yet. Um, so we actually check for that because these modules could return anything. Uh, we have to check to see if it is or isn't because some things might not actually need to be a generator. Um, but if it is a generator, it says, okay, we have a generator. In that case, I'm going to create a progress bar using rich like we do everywhere else in, uh, in Pocket. We're going to create a progress bar and we're actually going to track the progress of the um, That is really useful for things like enumeration because that way the enumeration modules themselves don't say, oh goodness, this, this operation might take a while. I need to create a progress bar. I need to make it look nice. I need to make it not conflict with another progress bar that might already be running. Uh, I don't want to like clobber the output on the terminal or anything like that. This handles all of that. So um, if you are running a module from within a module, you can pass in your own progress bar and it will notice, hey, I already have one. I don't need to create another one. Um, or if it doesn't have one already, it will create a new progress bar and play it. That way, this kind of like um, recursive module calling, which happens in the case of these gather functions or, or these gather modules, or in the case of uh, what I'm working on now, the escalate uh, recursive escalation to try and find uh, privilege escalation paths, um, modules get called by other modules repeatedly. Um, and what, what would happen if this didn't work the way it does is that you would end up with multiple progress bars trying to be displayed and rich progress bars really don't like that because they think they have a lock on the terminal and then end up with the possibility of some kind of deadlock and or uh, progress bar output just overlapping each other, which is really, really gross. Um, so this is really cool. It's just kind of like a built-in, hey, no matter what you're doing, you're going to get a progress bar. Um, and it'll, it, when I say progress bar, I don't mean a thing that'll say like 0%, 10%, because there's no way for it to know how many items you're going to be returning. But it will be a progress bar in the sense that it's a status output that um, updates itself as it runs. Um, the actual status uh, segment of it is taken by the string equivalent of whatever you So if you yield a string, it, the status will just be that string. And if you yield some other object, it'll run string on it. And so that's nice and useful. And then if it is a generator and you yield Specifically, there's the status class that I find, which is actually it should be defined right here. It's literally just a subclass of string, um, so it's it's just a string. But it allows me, if you yield a status object, it does not get added to the results that get returned from run, but it does get update. It does update the progress bar, so that as you're running, you might say, "Oh, well, I don't have anything to return yet, but this might take a while, so I need to update the progress bar." You can just yield a status object, and that doesn't get clobber your results. It just updates the progress bar and allows you to keep going. Um, so that just kind of makes it really easy and simple.
for uh, whatever module you're writing to get nice status and log output without actually having to do all of that um, and without them conflicting with each other. So I thought that was really cool. Um, it's kind of a, a gross function between argument processing and this progress stuff, um, but it works and it's cool. Um, it also, with the, the modules calling modules, you end up with a new task on the progress bar for each module that gets called. And then as they finish, they disappear. So it's kind of a cool if you have it, if it calls like one module calls one module, which calls another one, which calls another one, you end up with four actual tasks on there. You can see them all completing. And as one completes, it'll disappear. And eventually the whole progress bar disappears and it says it completed. So it's kind of cool to be able to see, hey, this is actually still working. It's not just hung. That kind of stuff kind of comes naturally and as a as an added benefit. Um, what else? Do you have any modules that uh, that like can do that? Like, can we see that progress in action, or is that best done with just a regular enumerate? Enumerate does that. It's just rather quick. Yeah. So if I run, uh, enumerate uh, gather here. Um, that clears everything, and if I do, there's only two of them, so it's hard to see. You can see there's two progress bars there, though, uh, or two progress oh, lines. Are those like updated. stacked? Yeah, yeah. So, th so they'll both be there. The top one is for the enumerate.gather itself, and that status out output will just be the name of the submodule that it's running. And the second one was the actual submodule that's running, and the status will be the actual fact that it's finding. So well, you can see both of them at the same time. Okay. I guess it's kind of hard to see because. Oh, that's really cool. It's not very long, but. Um, yeah, so, so you get, you get both of those, um, the, the markdown file producing stuff does still work. You can still do that. Stuff. Is there any way to kind of see what has finished already and, or, and, and not wait until the end for everything to finish? Or you, can you see like partial output as to what it's finding? Uh, it does not do that. Okay. Would that be a um, I mean, pain? You see the different results kind of streaming by, but you don't you don't get the actual whole thing, right? Um, maybe it's it it would not work right this second. Yeah, okay. But I'm still in the process of making everything, so it's possible. I would have to look. Um, it does not do that right now, though. Yeah. Um, the and 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 I see I see what you're getting at, like having that that intermediate results would be useful i mean it uh, certainly doesn't have to do it like by default but as an option i think that would be handy because i think a lot of times the use cases for doing enumeration is always but the use case of using pwncat is kind of whenever you can and whenever it's kind of easiest and whenever it's best um but the first thing you'll do is like either run lin enum or lin -peas in a regular uh like bare reverse shell that you have and it'd be nice to do that with pwncat but you also kind of still want to be able to like make sure that it all happens and actually succeeds because the hang up when you run enumeration and if it just takes forever, then you just have to sit and wait until your, I guess your shell comes back or you get any information that you could actually work with. Yeah. I, I guess not, not to say that it's not useful. It's definitely useful to look into it. Um, but the counterpoint to that, I guess, is that even if you get results as the stream back, it's, it's not going to make it so you can do anything. Right. You still have to wait for all that finishes. It's the ways anything else. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just because the nature of it is running commands over a, there's only one C2 channel. Mm -hmm. um, it can't have multiple of them. Um, so there, yeah, there's no way for it to send another command or put that in the background. Yeah, no, obviously the same way, like if you're running LinPs naturally, you have to wait till the whole script finishes. So. Sure, yep. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's but uh, that, oh, hello, uh, that does, Produce a markdown file um, similar to what it was before, where you have these facts all listed out, similar to what you see here, but in markdown. Cool. Um, what else? Can you showcase any of the like escalation code that you're that you're putting together now, or kind of share I your thought process on that? Yeah. Um, so now it's no longer going to be called privesc. We'll like syntactically refer to it as just escalate. Is that right? Yeah, that's kind of my goal. I, I like, I, th I personally think that sounds better. Yep. Um, and I, but then also it's kind of like a, a, uh, what's the word? Uh, okay, can't think of the word. But in any case, it's like a, um, a, my mind just went blank. It's not an important thing. So I didn't think it was a big deal to change it before. I was like, I don't really like, I don't know why. I just kind of 
wasn't as nice per best to me in my mind, um, but I wasn't gonna go back and make all those changes because that's silly. Um, but since I'm already doing this, that's kind of the direction I went. Um, so escalate, uh, I tried to, I, I don't know if simplify is the right word, um, but make the way that it actually finds an escalation. Um, I'm trying to make it a little uh, cleaner uh, than it was before. It used to be, if you if, if anyone's ever actually opened the code for Privest, it's kind of uh, disgusting, if I'm being honest with myself. Um, if you actually look at it, uh, where are we? If we actually look in here, like Escalate Single is the thing that actually takes a list of techniques and tries to find a way to escalate using those either read or write or shell techniques uh, that you've enumerated. Um, so it tries to does it, do that for a single step, a single user. And it's just a super long function and it's really disgusting to read if I'm being honest with myself. It's, um, yeah, I, I, I just wasn't incredibly happy with it. I was happy with it that it worked, but it's just, it's gross. I, it's the only way I can put it, it's just gross. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I was trying to figure out a way to kind of organize this a little better, trying to, trying to make it less gross, to read, easier to go through, easier to modify, easier. To that was my goal. Um, with that, um, there's still the idea of these techniques. Um, there's still that each of these modules will give you back a list of techniques. Those techniques, like I like kind of mentioned a couple of times, uh, are either file read, file write, or they're able to execute some kind of shell. Um, so those are the three like primitives to privilege escalation, right? Those are the three things that you might want to do. Um, and so each technique implements some or all of those capabilities. Um, in the past, this technique class was just data, it was just a data class. It just had um, a capability, uh, the user, and some arbitrary data uh, variable that the module could specify. And then the actual primest finder is what it was called, would actually call the module again, passing the technique back to it, and go back and forth. Um, what I've done here is instead of doing that um, for a specific module, uh, you can define a technique, uh, and then that technique has the right read, write, and execute methods. Um, so instead of like keeping everything in one uh, class, which gets kind of bloated and gross, um, I tried to split some things up where I could. Uh, so technique is a fully encompassed thing that on its own, you can call write, read, or execute, um, and it will write, read, or execute a binary or a file uh, with whatever data you gave. Um, that's the direction I'd like to go. Uh, that doesn't really matter at the moment. Um, the actual result of a individual running an individual module, when you call, for example, if you said run escalate.sudo, for example, it's going to um, look for techniques involving sudo, right? Uh, it's going to go and enumerate, use the enumerate module to figure out what sudo information we know. Can we read Etsy sudoers? Can we run sudo tech L? Do we have a password to run sudo? All that kind of stuff. It's going to find that kind of stuff. You're going to give those back. And then the pseudo escalate module is going to build out techniques and it's going to say, oh, I can run, I don't know, cat as this user and I can run, um, I don't know, said as this other user. And those are, those all create techniques that are either able to read or write files or execute binaries as another user. Um, those techniques that come back in now in the updated, what I'm, what I'm kind of moving toward, and this isn't all exactly working yet, I've been working on it today. Um, those all get bundled up into one object called an escalate result. Um, the escalate result is essentially wrapping a list of techniques. Um, in this case, it stores them as a dictionary that maps uh, a, the target user for a technique to an actual list of techniques for that target user, just for easier uh, interface when we're actually trying to do the escalation. Um, this escalate result is also compatible with the results type from the base module so that if you just run a module by itself, you get this escalate result back and the run command knows how to format that and display it in a pretty way. Um, so that's what all these category and title and description stuff is. It's just formatting so that the run command knows how to handle it. Um, then the actual methods that are interesting um, are similar to the technique. You have a write, a read, and an exec method. Um, each of those methods are, is going to look at all, you're going to pass it, hey, I want to, for example, write a file in the context of this other user, and the file path is going to be this, and the data needs to be the file. Um, it's going to look through the techniques that it knows and look for one that allows it to write to a file as the specified user. 
Um, if it has one, uh, literally a technique that has the capability to write tech, uh, capability, um, it will just use that outright. It's going to return the same thing that whatever that other function is going to return. Um, if it doesn't have a technique with capability to write, uh, as a last resort, it will try and use self.exec, which is another method down here. What that does is that looks for anything that is allowed to run other shells, um, and it will try and use that to actually get a full shell as that other user. Once you have a full shell as that user, you can just the same thing we had before, which is punk at the victim.open. Um, it's actually open a remote file, and then you're going to write the data. So that makes it kind of easy if we have shell access, but we don't have shell access. Right. So it'll it'll do all of that with a list of techniques that we're already in. Um, and the same thing with read, it'll go through them and find the one that works. Um, same thing with exec, it'll go through, find, and see if we have any shell techniques that can run our shell for us and do them. Um, that's not incredibly complicated. Uh, but what's kind of cool is that uh, you have this extend, which is just like extending an array, but it extends a, an escalate result with new techniques from a different escalate. So what that means is that, uh, which this is part of it that I haven't written yet, um, I have some kind of notes here about what it might look like, is that, hey, uh, if we have this auto module that does kind of the same thing Privest does now, um, what it can actually do is it can create an empty escalate result. And then for all of the modules, like every single privilege escalation module, it can run that module and extend its escalate result with all the results from all the others. And then all it should have to do is try and run dot exec. And if it, if it works, then cool, we've just escalated to that. And because that escalate result now has all the techniques from all the modules, it can use them and, and mix and match them as it, as it needs to. Um, and theoretically be able to do that a little cleaner, a little easier to read. Um, less messy, because I think the old one was very messy, uh, in my personal opinion. It's not up to my own standards, but I did write it. Uh, <laughs> um, that's what that looks like. Uh, I don't know what else. That is really. super cool. Not a lot else done yet for S -Bleak. That is my vision of it. That's what I hope it looks like. This is the little bit of code that I've done so far. There's only like, what, 300 lines that I've written so far for s -Bleak. That's literally all that exists at the moment. Um, but, and that's including this giant comment. Uh, but that's my vision. I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be uh, useful because not only can you uh, then run, not only do you still get a, a cleaner and, and, and more uniform interface to the old automated privesque, like that still exists, obviously, that will still exist. Um, but also you're able to run individual modules. Uh, some of the problems we had before, or I don't even know if I call it problems because they were artifacts of uh, the fact that we were testing or running these on, on machines that we knew had specific. For example, you open up like a try hacking machine or something and the name is really obvious what the vulnerability you're looking for is. Um, you know what you're looking for, you know what you want. Um, you know it can be something like this. Uh, in that case, maybe you don't want to run the auto because it's just going to take a little while. It has to do a lot of enumeration. It has no context for what this is going to be. It has to check everything. Um, so with this, you can actually run individual modules. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be pseudo. So let me just run and like escalate.sudo and see what happens. Um, and that might, be, that might be good for you, for your specific use. Um, so I think that'll be good. It also opens up the avenue of being able to specify uh, more parameters because these escalate modules have the same uh, features as all the other modules and you can specify arbitrary parameters. There's a comment down there, um, down here that I kind of scrolled by. There are a bunch of arguments that by default, any escalate module will take. For example, there's all these flags that are basically like, hey, do I want to write a file? Do I want to write a file? Do I want to read one? What's the path? What's the shell I'm going to use? The user I'm looking for, all that kind of stuff. It's all default to all modules. But you can, when you subclass and create your own Escalate module, specify custom arguments. What, what would basically happen then is that that module wouldn't really be uh, available for automatic escalation. It would still try um, if you've set, for example, a global argument or you pass one specifically to the auto that matches, then it, it would do it. Um, but if it doesn't have that argument, then the auto privilege escalation just won't try it because it doesn't know what the value for that argument should be. And there's no way it could know. Um, but that allows you to create more complicated escalation modules that need user input. You need to tell it, hey, here's where to look for this. I know because of the context, something that Pomcat couldn't make. Um, so that's cool and useful um, for more complicated stuff down the road, hopefully. Yeah, one of my uh, like 
latest or someone that's been viewing a couple of the other videos has been telling me he's been uh, trying to put together a module for Pwncat so we can do like the the pseudo CVE, the vulnerability where you specify like a user ID of negative one or like that high, like a, above I the. He, I just on Discord like yesterday. Oh, Western? Yeah. yeah. Or he put it up on, on GitHub. Uh, I actually need to check to look at it. I haven't yet today. But, um, so I shout out to you, Wester, if you happen to be watching this video. But I tried to say like, hey, I know we're doing a couple of things. Caleb's been kind of maneuvering and moving and rearranging <laughs> some things. So <laughs> I felt kind of bad when he sent me the message. I'm like, oh, this actually like he like he did a really good job like using. Um, I, I, I hope my doctor is helpful. I hope he had worked through the code to figure it out. But he used all the stuff that like how it was supposed to be there and how I envisioned it to be used. So it was really cool that and like oh it's exactly how i meant someone to use it, it was really cool awesome um uh but i, I did feel kind of bad when he messaged me i was like oh dang i'm in the middle of ripping everything apart <laughs> but I, I, it's it's at the end of the day uh if anyone's worried it's my fault that it's all changing so it's my responsibility to like convert everything so eventually once i get all this stable and then also convert all of the modules and units or the units is the wrong word uh, Katana. Katana. Part, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all the, the modules and methods over to the new, then I will merge uh, this branch back in. But uh, until then, it won't break it. So. <laughs> so, yeah, with that said, this is still very, very heavily a work in progress. Like, this has all been just something cool that we would like to. That I think. I think it's cool that you could showcase and like, hey, kind of peel back the curtain, but it's not done yet. This isn't something that you can just get pull and get play with right now, unless you want to switch that branch and maybe finagle. It, it is it is there. You yeah. can go look at it. Uh, it's under a branch called Modules uh, on GitHub, uh, but it is in no way stable. Um, and also the only Escalate modules implemented, or sorry, the only enumerate modules implemented are file capabilities and set UID, and the only persistence module is uh, FD password. So it's not incredibly useful at the moment and no other part of Phonecat is using it at the moment. Nothing depends on it. Um, so it's it's not incredibly useful at the moment, but the, the underlying skeleton is structured. Well, I'm hoping I can kind of jump into it soon enough if, if you made it like that beautiful, easy, incredibly extensible and simple, like, hey, just pull down one of the uh, other, like the enumeration modules. And then if I can refactor and re recreate it for some of the other things, hopefully I can jump in and help out with that as well. <laughs> I would appreciate it because converting things is the main of my existence. It's well, it's funny. You, you're always so good at re destroying everything to build it back up in a new, <laughs> in a new framework and architecture. I'm going to try and help <laughs> merge everything or migrate <laughs> into that new setup. Between, between Katana and this, <laughs> it's like notorious for just being like, Oh wait, I changed my mind. Let's change everything. <laughs> John's in the background. Like, Oh, <laughs> yep. More for me to convert, hopefully, or at least I'm, I want to help where I can. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm excited. I think it'll be good. I think it is good so far anyway. Um, well, it's very, very cool to see the new things that you're cleaning and the new stuff that, I don't know, is still very... And I think even even going to the Metasploit-like syntax and setup maybe that's like less of a barrier of entry or there's not as many weird, like we said, kind of different for every single command earlier to arguments or parameters to, to pass it. So maybe this, yeah. I think this will be really cool. And I think I, originally, I think I just didn't think very far ahead or far enough ahead anyway. When I, when I, when I remember, I think the last thing we implemented was escalate or like escalation. Or sorry, I think the last thing we implemented was enumeration uh, modules in the old framework. Yeah. The last thing we um, I remember starting to do that and I was like, oh, crap, all of these are completely different. <laughs> this, is not, this is not good. And not that it's bad, like it worked and it was fine, but as far as like if if I wanted somebody else, which I do, I think it's really cool when people do uh, to come in and like implement something like, like a module or something for it. Like, okay, well, which one are you implementing? And they're all different and they all take arguments or don't take arguments, stipulations on them all. Consolidating all that, I think. Well, cool. Alrighty, thanks for thanks for peeling back the curtain. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we've been chatting for like a, a good hour or so, but hopefully this will be cool for some folks. It's so it's so funny. There are so many people that say like, "Yo, where's Caleb at? Like, are you guys gonna do another hack the box stream sometime?" That shit's hilarious. <laughs> we moved. We moved away. We I know. All... Yeah, the brotherhood's <laughs> broken up. It's sad, but, uh, but cool. We can do one. 
Friday. I'm a la day. Oh yeah, I mean, if you if you if you're up for it, I mean, the internet would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for whatever, man. As long as there's pizza involved, it's whatever. Yeah, dude. The <laughs> world got a whole lot better after pizza was invented. That's true. I remember that day. <laughs> Sweet. All right. I'll let you go, but thanks for doing this. I appreciate you hanging out. I hope it was kind of yeah. still fun and cool and casual. So. Yeah. Goodbye, internet. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> With the